everyone, this is your IAO tech guy, and today we're going to be talking about a Linux distribution called Bodhi Linux. Bodhi Linux is based off of Ubuntu 14.04. I would say that it's a very uh, minimalistic um, distro. Um, and, you know, I, uh, I came across this actually from a, a comment one of my, uh, someone made on my uh, Zorin OS video. And he was asking if I could, if, if he could, uh, put the Enlightenment desktop, which is the default desktop for Bode Linux, onto, uh, Zorin OS. And I did a little bit of research and found out that you couldn't do that. But it piqued my curiosity and I decided to dig further and here we go. I got Bode Linux running in a virtual box. I'll go ahead and full screen it for you right now. And we can take a quick tour of this, uh, uh, Linux distribution. So that's how I came across it. And to be fair, let's I'm going to go over the good things about it, the bad things, and then I'm going to give you my bottom line up front. So here's the good things. It, it's easy to install like most Ubuntu-based distributions. It's a very hassle-free installation. It's very straightforward. There isn't a lot of... Um, it's not very complicated. It's pretty easy to do. Though, in VirtualBox, and this shouldn't... This doesn't affect the the way the operating system works, the distribution works. This is just kind of a personal thing. I like to add in is that I had a hard time getting the VirtualBox guest editions working on Bode Linux. But I did some research, I figured it out, and here we are. Okay, so you know let's start off with the um well I can't cover that. Easy to install. And another advantage, and this depends on where you're coming from, because some people they like a they like having a distribution, a Linux distribution with everything already installed for them, like their office suite, video player, audio stuff, internet browser, etc. Now, some other people were kind of very hardcore, very minimalistic, like a minimum install, which is the basics. And Bodhi Linux just gives you the basics. So, here are your applications: Archive Manager, Leafpad, Midori Browser. You get a package manager, a file manager, and a um, and a terminal uh, a terminal program, so you can get to a, a a command line, and that's that's all it comes with. And it also comes with Synaptic, but you got I think you got to kind of dig for that to to get a to get the Synaptic package manager. But like I said, it comes with EDEB, its own Linux package manager, and you know it's. You know, like I said, it's a very minimalistic program. And some people like that. Some people like having control over their, um, complete control over their uh, operating system where they install the packages that they want. Say, for example, you don't like GIMP. Now, I know GIMP is a very popular image manipulation program that comes standard on, mo on many Linux distributions, especially when, in regards to Ubuntu and possibly um, Fedora, but I don't know that for sure. Say if they want to use... Um, Dog it, what's the name of that program? No, it's not that. Uh, it's, um, God, I forgot the name of it, but it's a very simple image manipulation program. And, um, no, it's, uh, let me see, I'll, I'll find it right now. It's, all right, control home. Sorry about that, I just had a brain for it. So let's go scale, switch. And it's graphics. I haven't installed it yet, wow. And I forgot the name of the damn program. Well, I'm sorry about that, so. It's a it's a very popular it's a it's a very small it's a much smaller program than um than GIMP and I forgot the name of the damn program too so that's a little frustrating but anyway you could you have complete control over your over your um over what applications go onto your machine and you can install exactly what you want how you want it without fuss or muss or anything like that so it's a very bare bones operating system I think the um the ISO download of this is like 600 and something megabytes, and that's nothing at all. Okay, so it does come with Synaptic Package Manager, but you do have to dig for it. Okay, and that's and I guess this is all I have the beholder because it depends on what what you want and what you want to be able to do and how you want to set up your uh, your computer. So very light, very light distro, probably really going to be good on uh, lower power machines and older machines. It's highly customizable since it's pretty much bare bones. You get to set the tone, 
and configure it the way you want. It has the Enlightenment desktop, which is a unique desktop. I have not seen a desktop like this before. It's a very unique and different desktop, and if that's something you're into, then you know what? This is the uh, Linux distribution for you. I already said it's uh, built on Ubuntu 14.04, and I know some people don't like Ubuntu. Me personally, I don't like the Ubuntu distribution itself because I hate the damn um, Unity desktop because it looks like a, they, they've gotten into this kick of trying to make the desktop look like a tablet. Windows did that in Windows 8, Windows 8.1. Um, I don't know if they're bringing back the start menu in Windows 9. Now, I, now they did say they're going to bring it back in Windows 10, but it just, you know, but the Ubuntu 14.04 operating system itself, I like it. I mean, I'm running Zorin, which is built on top of that. Linux Mint is built on top of that. Several other distributions of Linux are built on top of Ubuntu 14.04. And there are other distribu there are other, uh, Linux distributions out there that are really good. Fedora, some people like Fedora. A lot of people are getting, um, are, are digging on, uh, Man, uh, Manharo Linux. And you got the hardcore geeks that like Slackware, Arch Linux, and similar distributions. And overall, the beauty of Linux is that there's a, there's pretty much, it's like Baskin Robbins 31 flavors. There's pretty much a flavor that you can find that you can get into. Now, let's talk about some of the disadvantages of Bodhi Linux. And this is just my personal opinion. You want to have a discussion about it? I'm cool with that. We can have a discussion. Just, you know, the, the name calling, the just tear, going into attack mode is going to get you banned and muted on my channel because I don't have time for it. But if you want to have a discussion and we can discuss the merits and, you know, and exchange ideas and cool, awesome. I'm real, I'm down with that. Now, the things I, that I see that I would consider disadvantages to Bodhi Linux, it's not very noob friendly. It doesn't look like a, you know, if you're, if you're coming from Windows or Windows XP, this desktop will take a while, it'll take a while for you to navigate around and figure things out. And then you're going to have to install applications and get things set up the way you want. And it's, it's a little complicated. I mean, I had to dig through a bunch of menus and look through a bunch of stuff just to be able to change the font size on this because I can't. I, I have a hard time reading the small fonts with the bigger resolution um, screens. If that makes sense. I, I still haven't been able to find a way to change the display resolution on this. So it's default to the 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution that my um, that my HD uh, TV has, which I use as a monitor. But I could not find a way to change the display resolutions on this. That really kicked my butt. I, you know, and it it was, you know, and it was a little bit, it's a bit of a learning curve. So if you're coming from Windows, like I said before, if you're coming from Windows and you want to get into Linux, I, I would say this is not the distribution for you. I would say go with a Zorin, a Linux, uh, a Linux Mint. I mean, hell, even give a, even give Ubuntu itself a try. There are several other distributions out there that are more, um, friendlier to people that are coming from Windows. This is not the one. That doesn't make it a bad distribution. It just I just wouldn't recommend it for newbies coming from Windows or newbies to computing. Period. You know, and conversely, one of the advantages of it that it doesn't come with a lot of stuff, so you could install exactly what you want. Is also a disadvantage at the same time, especially if you're a, a noob to Linux. It doesn't come with a lot of stuff. And let me see. Okay, and. I think I've already alluded to this, but it's got like what I would call a foreign layout. The desktop is laid out differently than other desktops I have looked at. Maybe if you're a Mac person, you might be able to get into it or relate to it. But me personally, I didn't particularly care for it. And so, and you know, the current desktop I have right now looks really slick. Uh, the current theme I have right now, I mean, looks really slick. It's a uh, very, very nice, very, very modern looking. But if you go to some of the other themes on this. You're going to see that, you know, the themes are not so hot. So let's go to. Okay, this this theme right here. How the hell that happened? Anyway. Scaled. Switch. All right. Now we're going to go back to full screen. Did that do it? Nope, it didn't. You're going to see that this theme looks, at least in my opinion, it looks like kind of almost something out of the 90s. Wow. Control, desktop, appointment, settings. Huh, that screwed it up too. Well, 
chalked out as a disadvantage. So control C, scale mode. All right, let's go back to scale mode and see what we get. There we go. Let's get out of that theme. Let's try this one. All right, it looks a little bit better. But at least it does have some themes that come with it. But still, it doesn't really, that isn't going to get it done for me because me personally, I know how to, um, Okay, we're back to the original thing. Good. Never mind you, this is VirtualBox, so it might be a little funky. Anyway, I didn't like some of the themes, and that should be a minor complaint. Um, I've already alluded to the fact that there was difficulty changing the settings, and I just did a really quick overview of this. And as someone that really digs Enlightenment, please let me know. Leave a comment on this video and tell me why you dig Enlightenment so much. And let's have a conversation. The bottom up line up front, I think this is a great distro if you're kind of a, a Linux geek and you want something that's kind of off the wall and offbeat and you can do your own thing and install your own apps and it comes bare, pretty much bare bones, then this would be the distribution for you. I would not recommend this to uh, newbies or people coming from a Windows environment. Me personally, I would not use it because I'm, and I also come from the perspective of someone that did computer desktop support for seven years. And granted, it was a long time ago. However, I look at it as like when I'm presenting something to uh, to one of my users, I gotta make sure that they feel comfortable using it, that they're not scratching their heads looking for stuff, that they're able to get in there and just start working. And this uh, particular distribution of links does not fit that bill, in my humble opinion. And it's just like, it, you know, it's good for it's kind of a niche, a niche um, links distribution or operating system. I can see where some people might get into this and totally dig on it and love it, but me, it's just not floating my boat. So anyway, that's my review uh, of Bowdye Linux. Um, I'm trying to do better at doing these videos. I appreciate any uh, constructive criticism and positive feedback, so leave a comment. This is your IAO Tech Guy, and I'm going to end this video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.